Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 279. And today is our lesson number 66. Lesson number 66. Problem number 52 is what we are going to do. Problem number 52. They tell us that X and Y are positive. X and Y are positive. I don't know why I have a question mark here. X and Y are positive. Not positive integers. They don't they don't they don't say that they are whole numbers, simply that they are positive. Question is, is X less than 10 and is Y more than 10? That's what it is. The first statement tells us that x is less than y, x is less than y, and they tell us that x times y is 100. x times y is 100. Now listen, here's what's going to go on. I, I don't know if I want to write everything down or just explain it. Look, the only way the product of two numbers, the product of two numbers can be 100 is they are 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. In which case, x would be equal to 100. I shouldn't say the only way. The only way I'm describing the whole scenario. The only way this and then something else is coming up. The only way product of two numbers is going to be 100 is when they are equal to each other, which does which which is not allowed here because we are told specifically that x is less than y. So this one, this is one possibility. Another possibility is the only way. The product of two numbers can be 100 is 1 when they are equal to each other equal to each other i.e. 10 times 10 is 100. That's one possibility. Or another possibility is if 1 is greater than 10 and other is less than 10. That's the only possibility. That's it. Why? Let's think about it. Why? Why can't they be both less than 10? Well, if they were both less than 10, this is what you will end up with. If they were both less than 10, you would end up with something less than 10 times something other less than 10, or something less than 10 times some other number less than 10 is going to be something less than 100. But we are told that the product is exactly 100. Also, they cannot both be more than 10. If they were both more than 10, if they were both more than 10, something more than 10 times some other more than 10 is going to be more than 100. But that's, that's ruled out. It has to equal, it has to equal 100. So in order for the product of two numbers to be equal to 100, and if they are not allowed to be equal to each other, they cannot be both 10, then the only way it is possible is if, more, if, one, is more than 100, if, one, if one is more than 10, and the other one is less than 10. Which is exactly what we are told here, that one is less than the other. For example, we know the product is 100, x times y is 100, maybe 1 is 3, in which case the other one would have to be 100 over 3. Voila. 3 times 100 over 3 is 100. Or maybe 1 is 5 and the other one is 20. In both cases, we satisfy this condition that x is less than y. 3 is less than 100 or 100, 100 over 3 is less than 100 divided by 3 and 5 is less than 20. In both cases, as we can see, if one is less than the other and if the product has to be equal to exactly 100, one has to be less than 10, the other, other one has to be more than 10. They cannot be both less than 10. They cannot be more than, both, be both more than 100, as you can see there. So therefore, the first statement does answer the question. The question was, is this true? 
which we just found out that one is less than 10 and the other one is more than 10. That's it. That's what it is. One here, our x here, our x here is less than 10 and our y here is more than 10, which is precisely what this says on the top. The question was, is it, is it true? The answer is yes. So the first statement by itself does the job. The first statement by itself does the job. A, D, B, C, E. Since the first statement by itself works, does the job, answer, answer cannot be B, C, or E. It has to be either A or a D. Let's look at second statement. That's it, we're done with the first statement. Let's look at second statement. What does the second statement tell us? The second statement tells us that x squared, x squared is less than 100, which is less than y squared. Well, this is silly. This is just silly. Because if you were to take the square root of the entire thing, if you were to take the square root of the entire thing, what do we end up with? It? And it is this is per perfectly proper to do that. If somebody tells you that 4 is less than 9, then obviously the square root of 4 is less than the square root of 9. It's perfectly proper to do that. It's perfectly legitimate to do that. So if you were to take the square root, square root of the entire inequality, here the square root of x squared is x which is less than 10, which is less than y, but this is the exact same thing as the statement 1, which we just found out was enough to answer the question. If the statement 1 is enough, is enough to answer the question and the statement 2 is nothing but statement 1 incognito, then statement 2 is enough. Therefore, the answer is D. Let's learn this one, shall we? It came out of nowhere. What I said was that the statement 2 we just found out is nothing but statement one incognito. What does incognito mean? Incognito, if you were to break it up, the second part of the word, the second part of the word comes from the word cognition, which means knowledge. And the prefix means not or without. So incognito literally means without knowledge or not having a knowledge or lack of knowledge. That's what it means literally. Metaphorically, it just means somebody who's in disguise, somebody who's not revealing their true identity. This first, this second statement, masquerading as something else, it turns out is the same, same bloody thing as the first guy. It's no different. It's got a square on top of it. That's all. We learned this word. I know, I know we learned this word incognito. Let me give you, give you the day if you're curious. Just, ah, day number 42. Day 42. If you're interested, in addition to improving your math skill to prepare for the math portion of the exam, if you're also interested in improving your vocabulary, you can go to my channel and look, uh, and look at the vocabulary videos. Just type in vocabulary, day 42. And if it doesn't pop up, try putting in my name with it also, Keshwani, and then vocabulary, day 42. And you will see the vocabulary video on day 42 where we learned this word incognito, along with some other interesting and useful words, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, you have to make your own call. I'll see you tomorrow when we'll do the next problem, okay? I don't want to start another one right now. Bye now.